anymore. Um, mine's on my phone. Okay. All right, you are all set, Diane. So I want to welcome folks to the Lucy Robbins Wells Library uh, Board of Trustees. This is our regular meeting uh, for September 13th, 2021. And I'll ask Elizabeth Rogers, our new secretary, to do a roll call. So if folks who are on the call or on the video will uh, confirm that they're here, that would be appreciated. Elizabeth, I do know that uh, Anna Eddy and Maureen Lyons will not be in attendance tonight. Okay, Elizabeth. She may be muted. She's not oh. muted. I think she's having that issue again. Oh. Hmm. Is that any better? Yes, better. that's better. Okay. All right. Uh, Andy Brecker? Here. Thank you. Oh. My apologies in advance if I say anybody's last name wrong. Mm -hmm. No problem. Um, Lauren Goodgoyen. Laurel Goodgen, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Igelski. I'm here. Lisa Jones. No. Pauline Krug. Here. Iris Larson. No. Leanne Minky. Here. Neil Ryan. Here. Diane Stam. Here. Christine Shushan. Here. Lisa Maston. Here. Karen Benner. Here. Carolyn McLean. She doesn't normally attend. Okay. David Nagel. Here. Chris Miner. No. Brian Wood. No. Kim Rada. Natalie Harbinson. And Sheila Rowell. I'm here. Everybody I have on the list. Great. Lisa Jones just came into the meeting. Super. So Elizabeth, if you can update that with Lisa Jones as being in attendance. I would appreciate it. Okay, uh, James, do we have anybody on the line for public participation? Nobody for public participation at this time. Okay, um, next up will be the town council uh, liaison report if they have anything. I just wanna remind folks that our goal is to be very quick uh, with our reports tonight and be prepared to jump off of this call and then jump on to the annual meeting call at uh, seven o'clock. So. Um, We'll, we'll try to table any in-depth conversations for our next meeting or uh, special meetings afterwards. So um, having said that, I will ask our town council liaison if he has any comments, Dave Nagel. Uh, the town council hasn't met for a month. Uh, we exempted our second meeting of this last month. We're meeting tomorrow night and uh, I'll leave it at that. And if anywhere along the line, something comes up where you have a question for me, I'll gladly answer it if I can. Great, thanks, Dave. I appreciate you being here. Uh, anybody sure. have questions for Dave at this point? No? Um, Iris, I did not see Iris here um, for uh, secretary's report. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to assume there is no secretary's report at this time. And I will move on to approval of minutes. Uh, everyone should have received the minutes from June uh, 14th, 2021 in their packet. Uh, anybody have any questions or corrections on that? Uh, Diane, it's Judy. Yes. Yes, I'll Judy. abstain because I was not in on the meeting. Thank you. Yeah. I'd have to abstain. I abstained also, Neil Ryan, because I wasn't at the meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, that's right. Um, please, uh, both of you have done a wonderful job of uh, calling out your names when you say Elizabeth is new as our secretary and it's going to be a challenge for her, especially now that we're virtual, uh, to keep track of who says what. 
So we have uh, Judy and Neil abstaining from the vote. Um, if there are no questions, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes for June 14th, 2021. So move, Laurel Goodgen. Second, Leanne Mankey. Thank you, Laurel. Thank you, Leanne. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, opposed? Aye. No one is opposed and Neil and Judy abstain. So I believe we're good there. And then review of the annual activities committee um, or calendar. Of course, that's a moving target. The most important thing that we have coming up is our 5K race uh, on October 3rd. Uh, we have our next race meeting and I hope that everybody will attend the uh, race meeting on Monday, October 20th, which is a week from today because that really is our last prep meeting before the actual race day. Um, is it October? September or October? Yes, September. I'm sorry, October. I don't know what it is with me. What um, is it? The race is in October and the pre-race meeting is September 20th. The race is October 3rd. Right. Thank you. Neil, Neil's my calendar. He's, he constantly, um, at least I know he's reading my email, so thank you. But that, that's what's going on there. So that's the most important thing in our calendar. Um, we have our annual meeting tonight, and uh, next month we will have our committee assignments uh, going out um, when we know who our, who our people are on our board. So that's what's going on with our activities calendar. And um, next up, I'm going to ask for Leanne Mankey to give the treasurer's report. Leanne? Um, I'm going to keep it very abbreviated. I sent out the July and August uh, documents as well as a repeat of what I sent out in June. Uh, we are in decent shape right now. Since the uh, August 31st, I have gotten the last sponsor's check and we are starting to get some, in addition to what um, Anna had reported on about mm -hmm. online uh, registration and um, Ready, Set, Go, we have received some in uh, in through the mail at the library. It's still very light. Okay. Thank you, Leanne. Any questions on the treasurer's reports for Leanne at this point? Yeah. No. Um, on an aside, I'd like to have Leanne work a little bit harder. And normally the trustees um, before our race in May send in a trustee contribution uh, to the race as a fundraiser. So if you have not done that, um, and are thinking of doing it as I constantly uh, have it on my to-do list, uh, please write out a check to Lucy Robbins uh, Wells Library, Inc. and um, send it into the library seeing as we are not uh, meeting in person. For the record, we have received two. Thank you. Trustee uh, And thank you to those trustees who are on top of things much better than I am. All right, any questions for Leanne on the treasurer's report? Diane, it's Andy Brecker. Uh, Andy. Is that the Ready, Set, Go you're talking about or something separate in terms of trustee contribution? So normally for the um, trustee contribution, we prefer a check written directly to the library rather than going through the website for Ready, Set, Go. Uh, when you go through the website and give a contribution, there, of course, is a fee, a handling fee from that uh, website. But traditionally, the uh, Board of Trustees have written a track before the Ready, Set, Go or anything else um, coming through as a uh, race sponsor. As a race sponsor. There's trustee a, a race trustee sponsor. Category, category for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Diane? Yes. May ahead. I suggest that a direct request go out to all the board members sure. to I'll remind send, them? I'll send a reminder email. Thank you. I think we could all appreciate that. Yes, uh, I've almost written a check. I don't know how many times I've just not been in the same room as the checkbook. Right. Am I getting the room? You know how that goes. All right, thank you. Um, moving on from the treasurer's report, we'll go to the library director's report with Lisa Mastin. Hi everyone. Um, I just, I'll be really brief. Um, we, um, they finished carpeting the first floor. Um, actually, I shouldn't say that. They've carpeted about 90% of the first floor. They have to finish the stairs, which they're gonna do this week. So that's nice, that looks really nice. And um, 
it's nice to have, you know, fresh new carpet in the library. So um, we're really pleased with that. Um, in about, well, October 4th, the day after the race, mm -hmm. grant my, the grant that I told you about last time, we received a grant um, from the, um, our, the, an ARPA grant specifically for libraries, the American Rescue Plan Act. And it's um, being, it's a federal grant that's being administered by the Connecticut State Library. And we purchased technology furniture and it's arriving October 4th. So no rest for the weary as Karen and I were saying. <laughs> um, the, we're getting a new water fountain. Um, they're replacing the water fountain in the building the town is with uh, the one that can refill water bottles. Super. You can't you, you know, use the water fountains with COVID. Mm -hmm. um, summer reading ended um, and we did pretty well considering still we're in the midst of a pandemic and a lot of it had to be online. The um, kids had 289 participants, the teens had 71 and the adults had 482. So um, overall, we are pretty pleased with those numbers. I mean, we would like them higher, but mm -hmm. it is what it is this year. Um, I did an interview with the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. Uh, one of the other grants that we, um, that we did get was from the, it was a Newington, uh, Newington Greater Community Fund. It's a grant that's, um, the Hartford Foundation um, gives out the grants, but they have a Newington community that chooses them for the Newington community, a, co a committee that does it. So um, we received a grant to purchase 10 additional Wi-Fi hotspots to circulate. And um, so they're doing like a um, promotional video that they're gonna have on the website. So I did my spiel last Monday. <laughs> um, so that was, that was good, it was interesting too. And um, yeah, I just wanted to tell you kind of what we've been doing the last two weeks. Um, we had to close the doors due to the COVID rates when we went into the red, um, the red level, the red phase. So the first, um, first part of the week, um, we, what we did do is we put somebody in the lobby and people were going to the door the minute a, a patron would come to the front door. Because a lot of people, even though we had some information out about it, did not realize we were closed. So we did a lot of service actually from the front door. We would books, we would fax for them, we would photocopy for them, we'd pull books. Um, you know, if they didn't know what to get, we'd offer to, you know, some suggestions. They were picking up their reserves. So we um we we staffed the lobby from and we continued to do that and um until we could reopen, which was this Monday, we reopened really for um limited browsing only. But the other thing that we did do as well is um, one of the biggest um, complaints, I guess, not in a terrible way that people, when they came to the front door, they wanted a book. And even though we could offer them titles, what they were actually looking for was browsing their, the new title. So what we did is we brought the new, we put, we brought eight carts of new materials out to them. Like we had browsing outside for a certain number of hours every day. So people could browse new books that included, um, adult teen and children, as well as AV and recently returned materials. And we set up a table, we had a staff person and we actually checked everything right out right there. So that was an additional service that we were adding. As of today, we, um, the other thing we did allow though is um, when we were closed, if somebody needed to use the computer, we were allowing two people at a time to come in for one hour to use the computers. Um, everybody had to do the, the COVID screening forms, but that was working out fine as well. Um, today we reopened for limited browsing of new materials only. So we're letting people go really as far as the new book area and they're allowed to go upstairs, but we're keeping the numbers small because even though we're in the orange level, they're concerned that next, this Thursday we're gonna go right back into the red level. So we're trying to keep it kind of limited because we just don't know what's gonna happen as of Thursday. So those are kind of the, some of the service changes we've been doing the last couple of weeks to try to um, you know, offer better service and also to kind of um, make people a little bit happier when they walk to that front door. Because a lot of times they're upset when they walk, by the time they leave, they're happy because we did something for them. So that's, that was, that's what we, our goal was. Um, and I think that's it. That's all I have. That's a lot. Could I, could Judy, I add, could, could I add something? 
And I, I'm just so impressed when I got the latest Friends newsletter, how much programming the library is doing, even in the face of the pandemic. It's amazing and how much reorganization they have to do when things change and they have to fall back too. And I think the staff is to be commended for, for also how gracious their service is during this very difficult time. Thank you. Oh, Diane, I think you're having that microphone problem we talked about. Yeah, it's not the microphone problem. <laughs> So, just the button button yeah <laughs> so thank you laurel and uh thank you lisa karen and the rest of the staff i i love the uh, thought, the idea of that outdoor browsing spare the moment i think you're right that was a, a great way to help uh satisfy customers needs and it's it's nice that the weather um accommodated that since we've had such a rainy season uh we, we were lucky to be able to do that and again you're you're constantly pivoting and uh, reacting to the situations and, and it's appreciated by all. So um, that's good. Anybody else have questions or comments for Lisa? No? Okay, no. okay thank you. Uh, next report would be the assistant director's uh, report, Karen Brenner. Hello. Um, just to hop on kind of what Lisa was talking about, the grants, the Hartford Foundation <clears throat> for Public Giving Grant, the um, that is for the Wi-Fi hotspots. We did receive those 10 hotspots. So we're in the process of um, getting them prepared for circulation. We're waiting to receive some cases for them. So hopefully we'll have those circulating by the end of this month. Um, latest, earliest, uh, latest would be early part of October. So that'll be a really nice thing for patrons. You know, we'll have a total of 12 at that, at that point. Um, also, uh, the grant monies from the ARPA grant that Lisa mentioned, um, part of those monies um, are have been allocated to headsets for the staff. So uh, this will allow uh, staff to actually leave the desk. So a patron calls and you're going into the stacks and you're looking for the book, you can stay on the phone with the patron. Um, and you can also answer the phone um, from that distance as well. So um, I think it's going to be a really good thing. Staff are looking forward to it and it'll allow us to even provide uh, better service because, you know, there are many times when we're kind of running for those phones, you know, you're out in the stacks and you're looking for a book and then a phone is coming back to you. So it's going to be a nice addition. Um, I participated in a Zoom training that actually James held um, with other town hall personnel to introduce us to the town's protocol and procedures for holding public meetings. So um, as you know, James has been doing your board meeting and most of the other public meetings for the town and those are gonna be pushed out to the departments. So um, we will be taking on that role um, as soon as we are fully trained in how to do so. Um, so that's just just something for you to know going forward, um, either October or November. Um, mm. It may just be Lisa and I. <clears throat> we'll see how what James' comfort level is with us. Um, and then I mentioned this, uh, I think, last meeting, but uh, tomorrow evening we mm. have a large program. We've got um, author Martha Hall Kelly. So this is the author that we're um, having in conjunction with four other area libraries. Um, she's, you know, a pretty big name author in that she, you, what you might know her from as being the author of something called Lilac Girls. Um, it was a New York Times bestseller, I think back in 2017, um, it, historical fiction, uh, World War II. Um, she's going to be speaking about her newer book, Sunflower Sisters, um, that takes place during the Civil War. Um, and that is tomorrow night at seven. So if you're interested and you haven't signed <clears> up, please please do just call the library. There's still space. Uh, it should be a, a really good event. Um, we also held a book discussion, probably, well, at the beginning of the month, um, centered on this book. And it was a, had a pretty lively book discussion. Um, and then just to finish up in personnel new, news, uh, Jen Hebert, who had previously been the business manager and is now uh, head of reference, has really finished most of her hands-on training with Carol and McLean. So Jen is 
fully moved into her role as a reference department head. And Carolyn is doing very well with her duties as the business manager. So um, things are falling into place. And that's it. <laughs> I have a question. Thank you. Yes. Go ahead, I, I just, uh, regarding the Wi Fi hotspots, mm -hmm. additional ones, are they going to be added to the current Sprint account? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And Karen, this is Diane again. Um, mm -hmm. What's the borrowing policy on those hotspots? So you can take them out for seven days. So we have a we haven't circulated them in well since probably co you know COVID began. Um, so there's a you know an agreement that has to be signed and there's a fee if you don't return them on time. Um, we we have done made some uh, exceptions during COVID for you know a few patrons who really did not have any access at all. Um, so we've lent those. But I can send that out to you, Diane, if you if you want to know the details of it. I was just wondering how we might be able to um, do that or make accommodations for when we are closed down. You know, I knew there was more to it than just the the Lucy to go type setup. So there's uh, more paperwork involved, and yeah. but it is a seven day loan, so that could be helpful for folks. Yeah, and we can, you know, as Lisa was mentioning, you know, about the door service and the browsing and stuff. We certainly will do you know, go out of our way to make those available, um, you know, whether it's through curbside or through, you know, at the front door, or if we're open for browsing, you know, in the library. Great, thank you. Diane, I'm just gonna add one other thing about them that's, um, they, it, it's unlimited data when you have them. So I think that's, that's nice for people because that's a real concern that a lot of people have if they have a certain data plan that, you know, is X number of gigabytes or whatever that, or whatever they are that, um, is unlimited so that's a big perk for the for having this device that's nice thank you lisa thank you karen uh any other questions for karen on her report no thank you then i will move on to the friends of the library report with sheila Rao. sheila hi i think i'm on can you hear me yes yes okay. Okay. Um, well, we, we've actually um, been pretty busy the last couple of months. We've had a couple of book sales. Um, we got rid of a lot of the old stuff that we had through Discover Books um, so that we could take donations again and get some newer stuff. Um, we had our um, most recent um, book sale yesterday, um, which really was probably one of the best we've had since this started. We had a lot of people there. Um, made over $1,700, um, you know, a lot of new stuff that went, people were happy to see it, um, which was great. Um, lots of help from the Boy Scouts too, and some of the um, um, teenagers from the high school came over and volunteered, um, which made it a lot of fun. Super, super. So we, have, we are, in two weeks, we're having another donation day. So we'll, you know, again, restock um, and then there'll be another um, sale. We're going to try for another pop-up sale in October. Right. And so that's all done from the driveway. Mm -hmm. Right. Like donations and then the book sales are mm -hmm. all done outside. That's, yep. great. that's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, does anybody have any questions for Sheila? No? Thank you, Sheila. Appreciate the report mm -hmm. and all the work that you folks do. Uh, we'll move on to the committee reports. Uh, budget report, uh, there is nothing at, at this time. We're uh, somewhat inactive there. We'll move on to PEP with Laurel Goodgen. Laurel, you're on mute. I can't see if you're talking or not. Hit the space bar. Sorry, nothing to report. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I had to wait for that. Nope. <laughs> Neil? Yes. Can I report? Yes. Thank um, you. I mailed out our August report on uh, Sunday, I believe. And if all of you have read it, you'll see that uh, August was a good month for, the, for our portfolio. We... Uh, made $9,721.20. Anyway, for the year, as of October 30, excuse me, August 31st, 2021, 
Our portfolio value stands at $802,574.34, which is a return percentage of 7.82% so far this year. So it's a good report and we had a good month and the portfolio is doing very well. No problems, no complaints, no issues. Mm-hmm. That's because we have somebody handling it who really knows what he's doing, Dean. Great. <laughs> That's it. Great, thank you. Any questions for Neil at this point? No, seeing none. Thank you, Neil, I appreciate that. Uh, We'll move on to House with Laurel. Yes, uh, Carolyn just sent me an up-to-date report of walkthrough, which I forwarded to the staff, I mean, to the staff, to the board. And you can see that a lot of progress has been made, even though we're not able to get into the building. And it was good to hear from uh, Lisa today about the carpeting installation too. So things are moving ahead, which is very good. Great, thank you. Uh, Questions or comments for Laurel on house? No, thank you very much. Uh, Facility and site. Uh, this uh, Maureen is not here tonight. Uh, we recently had uh, a meeting for facility and site that uh, Lisa Jones was very involved in. And I think Lisa was going to give a brief statement of um, what we had done and what went on there. So Lisa, if you would like to unmute yourself and fill us in, we would appreciate it. Sure, sounds good. Uh, I will quickly, uh, I sent a summary out to the folks that participated in the meeting. Um, on uh, Saturday morning. Uh, I'm happy to share that with other folks that have not seen that yet. But basically the discussion was related to how do we move forward on the idea of expansion for the library. And this session was really a springboard to get the, um, the, uh, the next step library building committee to move forward and, and how we were going to um, uh, meet that. So we did had a brainstorming session So we talked a little bit about, first of all, what was the scope of this? Uh, So we talked about the, what do we think that the library of the future should look like? Um, And also then other tactical. So how do we have some quick wins under our belt? And how do we start to look at some opportunities that can move us into the future, direct being directionally correct as uh, as well as uh, looking forward to expansion. Um, We did talk about, how to engage with um, all of our uh, patrons and uh, the things that they potentially would want to see as well as town hall, uh, I should say our town leaders and uh, business community, that sort of thing. So looking at what opportunities we had there. The results of the brainstorming really were uh, related to physical space. Uh, There were some service components communication and planning. So not only about um, the, what the message would be about the expansion, but also how would we go about um, communicating that information? Um, and then uh, feasibility and research. So updating the 2017 feasibility study, and then also doing some outreach to the community and determining what their needs might be. From a, 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 we took to, talked about funding, what were some funding opportunities, looking at um, uh, uh, and other foundations that were potentially available for funding uh, the state library, as well as other uh, business resources that might be interested in supporting us. Um, and then lastly, the quick wins were really, um, and, and again, the quick wins were meant to be directionally correct, directionally Uh, getting us to the future, what a future library would look like. So one of the big ideas that came up and Leanne actually has um, been leading this and actually has taken kind of uh, been meeting with uh, Steve Woods and so forth um, about um, expanding the library outdoors. And so looking at outdoor space in the the front yard, so Cedar Street side, but as well on the back side. Uh, So uh, a lot of really good ideas and a lot of good opportunity there. I think that will help set us in the right direction moving forward. Again, as I mentioned, another quick win is to update that feasibility study or and make it look more like um, a vision study instead. So how do we want to look in the future and then have that be our springboard to moving forward. But there were a lot of great ideas in some of the documentation that we had. 
So why not utilize that? Um, some of the other uh, other things were looking at um, stack maps. So a map of the library and being able to look at the um, how the library is organized on your phone or some other mechanism. Uh, concierge service, Lisa uh, Mastin just talked about con the, the concept of concierge service, looking at bringing books out front. So how does that look and morph into what we want the, the idea of a concierge service to be for the library going forward? Again, as I mentioned, the communication plan. So planning about how does that look? Um, what are some of the things we can do short term and long term? Karen Brenner and I are going to get together. I'm looking for our friends. Um, representative to maybe potentially join us on there and start, how do we start moving forward as a, a collaborative um, entity and making sure that we've got all our bases covered. And then lastly, again, purchasing swag for public events. So those are some of the quick wins that we thought we could move forward on. Uh, weeding the collection, combining reference and checkout desk, patrons holds uh, to be part of the self checkout process. Um, were some of the other ideas, those did not get assigned anyone as a responsible party. So we're just looking, still moving forward on some of those ideas. We were sort of running out of time and energy at that point. So it was a good meeting overall. I think it kickstarted um, our opportunity to expand the library. So it was, um, it, was a, it was a positive meeting. And I think that everyone got a, an opportunity to have their say in the, the work that needs to happen going forward. Great, thank you, Lisa. Um, does anybody have questions for Lisa Jones at this point? Only no. comment is that Lisa covered everything. I mean, with, with her report. I mean. And one comment I'd like to make is that uh, Lisa actually started this ball rolling um, before we knew where it would end up. Is it facilities, is it communication, is it whatever? So it's definitely, um, the direction and the kind of conversation that the board needs to have. And I commend her for trying to wrap her arms around that and then working so well with everybody else on the board to try and, and make sure that these things are, are happening, no matter what title or what department we put over that. So I, I know you put a lot of work into this and I, I truly appreciate it. So I wanted to call that out, even though it's not your communications committee, um, certainly you brought your skills um, to the board and, and to the rest of the department for that. And it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions for Lisa? No, thank you. We'll um, move on. Fun development with Anna. Um, Anna is not here tonight, but um, I think we should all be aware that um, during the summer when sometimes we're slow, Anna was not. Uh, she was able to go out and reconnect with some um, former sponsors. We have a new platinum sponsor, uh, Tilcon Tommaso. Uh, they will be here. And, and as you remember, Keeney um, has sold their business in town and left town. So we were left without that major sponsor. She was also able to get in touch with Data Mail and have them come back on. And yes, I'm, I'm looking for paperwork uh, for some of the folks that are there for the race. Uh, and she continued to move forward with the Ready, Set, Go program, the donations, um, getting all of the um, different participants for that and for the dining program. Uh, she is a workhorse and uh, she continually goes through and reaches out. Um, I would again like to emphasize she had sent an email out yesterday, even though she wasn't here. Uh, we need to do what we can to drum up some of the um, awareness and uh, actually participation in our upcoming race. So again, as she said, if you can just mention it to one person, of course, knowing Anna, she would prefer that you mention it to 15 yeah. people that you know. And, uh, <laughs> if we can, that would be great. You know, she would have a golden Rolodex that would go through all of that. So uh, I encourage folks to reach out. It is our major fundraiser for the year. Um, Again, last year when we were going through the COVID, she was the one that helped us shift and, and rework and um, allowed us to really uh, take advantage of some of the um, sponsors' uh, donations and keep them involved and alive and, and feeling appreciated. So um, that's what she's done. And actually, she's our honoree for uh, the annual meeting. So I'll, I'll go into that again. But I just wanted to, to say that in terms of fund development, she never stops, but she could always use some help. 
Um, so again, that email that came out uh, yesterday, it, it just reach out to one or two people if you could and say, hey, did you know we're still having our race? It's in October this year. Uh, that would be helpful. Okay. Uh, any questions around fund development? Good, because I would have postponed it for Anna anyways, probably. <laughs> All right, nominations. Maureen Lyons couldn't be here tonight. Um, she did uh, collect and uh, gather all of the information for the nominations and uh, nomination slate for the officer slate uh, remains unchanged. Um, even though we encourage other folks to step up if they wish to take those places. So again, tonight you'll hear the nominations for president. It is me, uh, vice president is Maureen Lyons, secretary is Iris Larson and uh, treasurer is Leanne Mankey. And of course we'll open it up on the floor at the annual meeting to see if anybody else is um, interested or has a nomination for that. Don't hold back. <laughs> <laughs> There, there were several forms. There were several forms that put something in, checked off a box, and then said, "But if anybody else shows an interest, please let me know." <laughs> so um, that, that's where we are with nominations. Um, it, communications. It says Iris Larson here, but it really should say uh, Lisa uh, Jones. Do you have any other updates beyond uh, the work that you did together with the facilities team? No, just a reiteration that Karen Brenner and I are, I'm sorry, Karen, I mispronounced your name. Benner and I are going to be uh, getting together next fr uh, Friday. Yes, Friday to talk about, you know, how do we um, take some of these ideas and start to communicate out in, uh, from a library perspective, from a board perspective, and then again, engaging the friends. So nope, nothing really substantial other than that. Great, thank you, Lisa. Anybody have questions for Lisa Jones? No, thank you. Uh, moving on to old business, annual meeting. We'll have our annual meeting, which will start at seven o'clock. And just a reminder to look for your emails for that other uh, Zoom uh, invite because uh, that's where the annual meeting will be tonight. Um, the Ready, Set, Go giveaway, uh, October 3rd. That's actually our race. and. Um, is on October 3rd and the Ready, Set, uh, Giveaway program. Anybody who's in the race and uh, anybody who's done the Ready, Set, Go donations will be part of uh, a drawing for prizes, the door prize type thing. Uh, so that will come up. Open board positions. We do still have open board positions in both the Republican and Democratic uh, slates. So if you know of anybody, who is interested or anybody that you would like to interest in joining the board. We're always uh, happy to have new folks come and join us. Andy is our most recent uh, board member. Uh, he is a repeat board member. I hope that speaks well of the board. It certainly speaks well of Andy to be able to uh, once again, step up and, and help the library. So we appreciate the fact that you have joined us once again and uh, he has a corporate position. And I don't know if there's any information still on the um, 150th anniversary. No, okay, I see lots of shaking hand, heads, so um, we'll go through with that. Uh, Leanne has her hand up. Leanne? I just, I, I kind of wasn't able to jump in when we were talking about the race. Uh, just an update on the race. What time is the meeting next Monday night? I'm going to say seven, but um, I'll, I'll send out an email and confirm okay. that. Uh, the reason I mention it is we have to get a, uh, an email invitation over to Megan Mankey, my daughter, but she's for the, uh, for cert. Okay. She needs to come and I just want to give her the right time beforehand, but she'll need an invitation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I will confirm the time. Thank you. Anything else? Let me look up at the screen to see if anybody else has their hands up uh, for anything. Uh, James, anyone on the line for public participation? We do actually have one member of the public who has come in. They're indicated as Natalie. If they are interested in speaking, they can use the raise hand feature inside of Zoom or star nine on their telephone. Give them just a moment. Yep. Hi, Natalie, welcome.
Yeah. Doesn't look like we have any uh, interest at the time, although it's up to you, Diane, if you'd like, I can try to unmute and see if they want to speak. Sometimes um, it's difficult. You can to do that. I, I'm just going to make a statement first that says that um, if you had joined early thinking that we would roll right into the annual meeting, that will be on a different link. Um, and those are on our calendar as well as the uh, virtual meeting page on the town website. Okay, great. So, so you can unmute at this point and see if she has something that she would like to say. All right. Yeah. You are correct. I was thinking I was on the right lead. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you at any time. And if you want to be on the annual meeting, there is a different link for it. Yeah, I will go look. Okay. Thank Thanks you. And we'll, we'll see you there. Okay. All right, if uh, there is no other public participation or comments from our group, I would ask for a motion for adjournment and that would give folks a, a moment for a quick bio break before we all sign on to the next link. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Judy. Thank Leanne you, Judy. Second. Okay, and Leanne Mankey seconds. Chris, I saw your hand, I just, nobody else heard it. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, thank you. Our meeting moves to adjournment and um, we'll see you all in a few moments uh, for our seven o'clock annual meeting. Thank I, you. I will go into the application and I'll send everybody out a link so it's right at the top of your inboxes. Super, so thank you. Thank That'll you. be helpful. See you in a few minutes. Thank you, James. So long. It was a Bye, second. everyone. See you soon. <laughs>